Welcome Capricorn, thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the song series. This is a series of videos where I dedicate a song to each sign and this is a song that I feel best represents the energies within your sign. Now if you've been with me throughout the series you'll know that I frequently refer to this really fun diagram of the zodiac to show us where we are and Capricorn I'm going to draw you on right now. I'm going to put an A for Aries to show you where we started. So we began our journey and apologies I have been holding this a bit low in some videos so I'm going to try and keep it a bit higher up so that you can see where we are. We started our journey, there we go, in Aries and I'm running it this way so we've come all the way down to winter now and we are in the depths of winter. Your sign Capricorn, we are right here. We have traveled quite some distance and winter is a really fascinating time because the light is less and you know we have to come together as people with each other in groups as larger groups you know collective consciousness um, things on this half of the zodiac it's more I see it as being more kind of from here to here and well definitely from here to the end of uh, Aquarius anyway Pisces is a, a little bit different I tend to think because uh, it's more than just people but I tend to think that the more public side of the zodiac is is represented here and it's when the light is less we need to come together it's a lot of light up here and it's more about the individual there's a lot more fun and joy as well things are tougher here but personally I think this is where it's really exciting uh, you know they say that when you've got let's say you've got a waxing moon in your chart apparently that signifies someone who's a lot more positive perhaps has less need for spirituality a person with a waning moon is said to be uh, quite a bit more spiritual they've had a little bit less light to deal with their life has been a bit more challenging and so they've had to develop more skills and resources within and I definitely see that happening in this part of the zodiac as well where the light is less. So as I do with all signs I'm going to take you through a quick rundown on what your sign is all about. Uh, you are ruled by Saturn and this is actually the first part of this is the first time we meet Saturn. You know Saturn is one of the most famous planets. Many people have written loads of books about Saturn. Um, many astrologers will blame Saturn <laughs> for say for example delays or tough times in our lives and that's fair enough. Uh, we're going to go into some of that in the later slides but um, you know Saturn has quite a bit of a reputation. He's talked about a lot and this is the first time that we're meeting him. We're going to meet him again in Aquarius but this is the first point in the zodiac where we do actually get to meet the famous Saturn and it's taken a long time to get to meet the hard task master. So this is a very exciting place of the zodiac. Your element is earth, you are symbolized by the sea goat and your motto is I master. Now originally this part of the zodiac ruled the 10th house of career, fame and honours and I typically see you know that this part of the zodiac produces phenomenal leaders of all kinds. Uh, so we're talking about prime ministers, CEOs, executives, top executives are all seen coming out of coming out of this house. These are people with huge amounts of responsibility on their shoulders and not just that I mean I have seen charts of entertainers and singers and musicians artists those kind of people with really strong 10th houses as well so 
you know, reading a career for someone is, is quite a fine art. What I generally tend to find is the ascendant will hold really what you're meant to be doing. And the 10th house is going to say to what level you get there. So if you are, for example, a singer, if you've got a very powerful 10th house, you'll, you know, you'll very much hit a big stage. That's how I tend to see things. Also, the 7th house could be for fame, but the 10th house is a bit of a powerhouse. So you're either this kind of CEO, head honcho, leadership role, prime minister, president type of thing, or you are at the very top of your field, which might be something very different to business. It might be, you know, that you're a singer or you're a comedian or something like that, you're an entertainer, you know, but you're going to reach the top of your game kind of thing. Um, as for your song, it, it's been interesting trying to find your song. It wasn't too hard, actually. Uh, for some signs, you know, I had to shortlist many songs. It was tricky. It was difficult. It involved a lot of research. This one didn't involve too much research. And when I got to it, I was really pleased. I was like, yes, this song definitely captures uh, the energy of your sign and is a really good representative of the energy of your sign. I kind of, when I, I've, I've listened to it many times, I used to listen to it a lot ages ago when it first came out, but I mean, you know, in the context of doing the research for this song series, I got the feeling that Saturn, you know, if Saturn could write a song, this would be it. I, I really did feel the Saturnian energy coming through here. The song is You Gotta Be by Desiree. It's a really beautiful piece of music. If you remember it when it came out all that time ago, but uh, if you're new to the song, what I recommend you do is you pause this video here and you can click on the link in the description to go and listen to your song and then come back for my analysis or you can just listen to my analysis now and then go off and listen to your song. Either way, it's absolutely fine. Uh, so what are the reasons that I chose this particular song? Well, if you have a look at the visuals, they're all in black and white. And for every song dedication, I've been analyzing both the lyrics and the visuals. So for Aries, you know, we had these guys on dirt bikes and people in tuxedos and kind of some bonkers things going on there. We had, for cancer, we didn't even have visuals. So I said, well, that's a new moon situation going on there. Now, this is the first place where we meet Saturn. And look at this. This is the first time I've chosen a black and white film clip. And that's actually really perfect. That's really symbolic. That really matches the energy of Saturn. Saturn is quite black and white. As he moves through the zodiac, as he moves, well, as he moves around the sun, he is on the outer edge, right? As far as the naked eye can see is Saturn. And I only go as far as Saturn because that's what the ancient rishis uh, of my system, which is sidereal Vedic astrology, they believe that we should only go as far as Saturn because it's as far as the naked eye can see. The other reason I only read up to Saturn is because the three planets beyond that, yes, they do have an impact here on Earth, but I tend to believe that because their movement is so slow, you know, it takes years. I think a Uranus transit is something like seven years per sign, something like that. Uh, you know, it, they take ages to get around. So I tend to think those outer planets have a more generational impact on us. So that's why, you know, we have millennials and that's why we have, um, you know, they have all these terms for them, Generation X and Generation Y and Baby Boomers and all these different generations. You go back through the decades and you'll see that generations do change, I think, because of those, the movement of those outer planets. Saturn will take 29 years to get around the sun. It takes 29 years. And... This thing about black and white is really interesting because as he goes around, 
He spends about, I think it's two and a half years per sign, if I haven't got that incorrect, it's something like that. And as he goes around, he does this kind of, you know, he goes forward a little bit and then back a little bit, forward a little bit, back a little bit, forward a bit, back a little bit. Now, of course, that retrograde motion, he's not going backwards. It's just that the earth is going faster than he is. But this forward and backward interesting motion is that he gets to check everything twice, like a really good accountant. He doesn't just look once, he has a look again. And then he goes forward and then he'll have another look. And then he goes forward and he'll have another. He has this motion in, in this incredibly big arc around the sun. It's absolutely fascinating. And that's why this black and white thing is so significant because <clears throat> when it comes to him being the karmic accountant of the zodiac, he checks it once and he checks it twice. And he's black and white about everything as well. He's like, yes, you're being honest. Good, you'll be rewarded. Okay, you're being dishonest. I'm sorry, that's a penalty. You're going to pay for that. You know, it, that's how straight he is. He is straight and he's honest and things are pretty simple. And I really like that. I think that's really good. You know what you're dealing with when you're dealing with Saturn? Uh, there's a minimalistic quality to the visuals of this song as well. I'm pretty sure actually in the film clip, hang on, it's been a little while since I've seen it. I'm just going to bring it up. Actually, I won't bring it up because that might tamper with the sound setup that I got going on here. But in terms of it being minimalistic, it is very minimalistic, isn't it? We've got Desiree there, and I think is it Desiree again multiple times, something like that. So you know, it's it's very minimalistic. Saturn will do more with less. You know, that is one of the things that I love about Saturn. He doesn't need a big budget. Like, you know, you go to the, the opposite side. Leo's kind of opposite to Capricorn. Leo probably wants a big budget to be creative. But Capricorn is like, no, it's fine. We can make a black and white film clip. Not a problem. <laughs> if we have a look at the lyrics. Listen as your day unfolds. Challenge what the future holds. Try and keep your head up to the sky challenge what the future holds. I love that line. That is really fantastic because if Saturn is writing this song, he's kind of saying, well, challenge me. You know, I mean, you can, you can talk to me, you can communicate. You don't have to just take it. You know, you can go beyond the stars. I really do believe that. I do believe that if we are doing our spiritual work, I mean, if we're doing our spiritual work, Saturn's got no need to bother you anyway. But, you know, he's always encouraging you to challenge what the future holds, you know. Even though he knows what your future holds, he knows every single activity that's going on from the sun to Saturn. He knows everything that's going on in this, in this area here. As the karmic accountant, he knows every single thing. He can probably hear your thoughts right now. There isn't anything he doesn't know. But he's saying, challenge what the future holds. You know, yes, I, I know, but right now you can sow better seeds. You can make better outcomes. You can clock up some good karma and you can cash in, right? That's definitely what Saturn is about. The lyrics go on. Lovers, they may cause you tears. Go ahead, release your fears. Stand up and be counted. Don't be ashamed to cry. Stand up and be counted, don't be ashamed to cry. Beautiful line. You know, that is asking us to embrace our vulnerability and to own our real, true feelings. Saturn wants us to be honest above all else. He wants us to be honest and he wants us to love ourselves. Yes, he wants us to love others, but he very much wants us to love ourselves as well. There's self-love with Saturn. There really is. There really are these two things, honesty and self-love. And this, this concept of stand up and be counted, don't be ashamed to cry. And where does that come in in the zodiac? Now, if you were with me up here in Cancer, and I'm going to kind of point them out, Cancer. 
if you were with me up here in Cancer and hello to any Cancerians who have come here upon recommendation because when I was in the Cancer video I said you know to Cancerians take a leaf out of Capricorn's book so if you're here well done good on you because this is a good place to be uh, stand up and be counted don't be ashamed to cry be vulnerable embrace your feelings embrace the water within you you know the bodies of water within you the emotions go there experience that feel it enjoy that you know that's that's a strong thing to do uh, it's very strong to be sensitive it's very strong to be vulnerable it's very strong to be open believe it or not and I know society doesn't teach us that way well society is rapidly changing on that front changing every minute and I have heard from futurists that you know in another 20-30 years it's going to be the intuitive sensitive types who are going to be ruling the world who are going to be in leadership positions who are going to be uh, you know really shaping society it's going to be a new world not, not far away I, I can see that happening then we've got in the lyrics these lovely lines where to me this is like a cheat sheet section this is like Saturn giving you all the answers saying look if you just do these things you're going to be fine you're going to sail through all the karmic tests that are coming your way so what do you need to do well you got to be bad you got to be bold you got to be wiser you got to be hard you got to be tough you got to be stronger you got to be cool you got to be calm you got to stay together all I know, all I know, love will save the day. So that is equipping you for the Saturnian tests that come to us all, right? You can do it. And he's giving you the cheat notes. He's giving you everything. He's saying you can get through this. And I like that. You got to be bad. You got to be bold. You got to be strong. You do. You got to be tough to be in this part of the zodiac. If you're at the head of a giant corporation and you have several of your competitors coming at you at any given time, you will be in various lawsuits. You will, you know, and these are these are this is all because of things your employees have done. You know what I mean? Yet you're taking the heat. It's that thing of. Um, I remember, I think his name was Bob Diamond who ran Barclays Bank in London and I think he got fired because he had some rogue traders in one particular department doing some things that weren't very good and uh, who got the chop? Well, he did, you know, he didn't authorize any of that. So yeah, I can see this, you got to be bad, you got to be bold, you got to be wiser. You know, to play some of these Capricornian games you have to be quite the master strategist and you have to be on top of your game and and this is the place of being on top of your game and at the top of your game this is the place right gets hard here uh, herald what your mother said read the books your father read try to solve the puzzles in your own sweet time there's this respect for elders let's not forget Saturn is old father time and he represents older people and he's sometimes seen as an old man who's moving very slowly around the zodiac which I think is really cool I sometimes picture him like Karl Lagerfeld that's just me uh, then it goes on some may have more cash than you others take a different view my oh my time asks no questions it goes on without you leaving you behind if you can't stand the pace those two lines are absolutely stunning time asks no questions it goes on without you time, time's not going to ask any questions Saturn has a job to do right that's that's all that he's doing he's just doing his job as a karmic accountant he asks no questions and he'll go on without you now if you have some some karma to pay if you have something to do that you don't particularly want to do I mean that's where we've got these lines you've got to be bad you've got to be bold you've got to be wiser you've got to be hard you've got to be tough you've got to be stronger you just got to get through it 
he's just doing his job. You know, there's no point in getting angry at Saturn, unfortunately. Um, time asks no questions. It goes on without you, leaving you behind if you can't stand the pace. The world keeps on spinning. You can't stop it if you tried to. The best part is danger staring you in the face. Absolutely. But I, I do like that line about time asks no questions. It goes on without you. That's something for all of us to think. Time definitely doesn't stop. Doesn't stop for anyone. What makes your sign so great? As with all signs, I've been saying what's so great about your sign and why you're a vital part of the zodiac and why you're much needed and much loved. And there is so much to love about you, Capricorn. There truly is. You guys are really tough. And yeah, this is a note I've got here that if you have lots of square energy in your chart, which as someone who has planets in the 10th house, you know, if you've got something say in your first or your um, your seventh, you know, you'll have some square energy going on there. And that can provide some uncomfortable Saturnian aspects. And I've got a note here, guess what? You've got a muscular soul. You know, Saturn is kind of like the cosmic personal trainer. That's one of the the analogies I have for him. So he's a cosmic personal trainer who will get you to the top. So think about when you're at the gym and, you know, you do 10 stomach crunches and then you have a personal trainer over you going, I know you can do four more. And you're like, I can't do any more. No, 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 please, I can't do any more. And he's like, I know you can do four more. That's Saturn. Saturn knows that you've got more in you. And he'll want you to, to do it. And you'll do it. You'll be amazed, you know, and you will, and you'll get to the top. He's a hard taskmaster, but you'll be so thankful to him. So definitely that's a great part of this sign that you get to work with this cosmic personal trainer who is going to whip you into shape and get you to the top. You really will, you know, this is, this is terrific energy to have. Uh, Saturn can be creative with almost nothing. You know, this is also the thing where, let's say, for example, so I was explaining that uh, the black and white film, you know, it's like, well, let's make a film clip. doesn't matter if it's just black and white. Let's do it. This is also the other analogy or thing I could use to illustrate this point would be, say, for example, a chief marketing officer of a company decides, do you know what? Every year we've been spending a million pounds per year on our marketing and this year things are a bit tight. You know, we've had a whole bunch of redundancies and we're going to have to slash the budget by half. And let's say you're the Capricornian and you're the creative agency. You're running a creative agency and you're going, oh my God, we've only got half the budget we had last year. Well, guess what? You, out of all people, will figure out a way how to do more with less. You'll probably come up with more innovative ideas and deliver something that's twice as good. You know, they say that need is the mother of all invention. And... You know, what's the need down here? Well, we haven't got light in winter. You know, what is the need? Well, yeah, we're missing out on light. We're missing out on warmth. We're missing out on sunshine. You know, so I do think that people get pretty innovative here. And if you look at this in terms of countries, many colder climate countries have very innovative people. You look at the Scandinavian countries, and I think Great Britain, this place, I think this is a very creative country uh, that's created lots and lots of things. Apologies, Capricorn, my camera just froze. It seems to be doing that lately at about the 24-minute mark, somewhere there, 25-minute mark. So I am going over time, but uh, there is just so much to say because this is our first introduction to Saturn. And I do have a couple more points I'd like to make. So I was in my spiel about what makes you so great. And I think I was talking about how colder climates 
produce very innovative people and that's one theory you know uh, there are lots of theories about where the most innovative people come from but I do think people who have Saturnian energy can be creative with less they can do more with less that is definitely a feature of Saturn I've got a note here that says children would easily pass the marshmallow test. Okay, what do I mean by this? Now, you know how psychologists always do these fascinating tests on people uh, and, you know, they'll record how they handle certain situations and make all these wonderful conclusions. Well, there's a brilliant test called the marshmallow test. And what these researchers would do is they would gather little children and then test them on whether or not they could resist a marshmallow. So basically they would have perhaps one or two children in a room. It's a kind of test control room that's set up with cameras and all that kind of thing or maybe even a double-sided window and the researchers would bring a little marshmallow on a plate to the child and they'll say okay now these are the instructions of this little game that we're going to play and this little game basically requires you to sit with this marshmallow but you're not allowed to eat it right you have to wait for 15 minutes and if you can wait the full 15 minutes then you can eat two marshmallows so you could eat one marshmallow now if you wanted to or in the 15 minutes you could eat that one marshmallow or you could wait until the end of 15 minutes and I will come back and if you haven't eaten it then you can have two marshmallows and these little kids they pick the really little ones you know like three four years old 15 minutes is a long time when you're that small and you're just left in a boring room with nothing but a marshmallow on a plate you know and it's so cute and comical and funny the footage that they've recorded of these small children and you just see them going crazy in there they're kind of they're looking at the marshmallow and then they touch the marshmallow and some of them pick it up and they smell the marshmallow they're going crazy and you know some of them make it to the end of the 15 minutes and they are rewarded you know they get to eat two marshmallows and some children don't make it. There's one piece of footage that I saw that was so hilarious. Uh, there was a little boy who ate the marshmallow while the instructions were being given. So I thought, wow, now that, there's a special kid right there. This is fantastic. But what the study found is that the children who are able to delay gratification, these are the ones that will generally rise to positions of great authority and responsibility in the world. And that's kind of what I see here with Capricorn energy. I'd imagine some of those children who were able to delay gratification, I'm sure that they had good 10th houses or they had a lot of Capricorn energy or they had some kind of Saturnian thing going on because uh, they were able to wait, they were able to delay, they were able to spend time, you know, doing nothing and just looking at a marshmallow without going crazy. But, you know, I also equally, I think that the ones who eat the marshmallow or especially the kid that ate the marshmallow while the instructions were being given, I think these children have such wonderful natural gifts as well. And they are, would be highly creative in different ways or they might be very expressive or they might be very bold and courageous or, or just very different and I've heard that some parents are trying to condition their child to be able to pass a marshmallow test I'm not sure it works that way this is the beauty of astrology you see we're able to see in a person's chart what are their natural gifts what are they going to be brilliant at you know and I think it's best to just embrace what nature gives you and work with that so as a as a person who is a Capricorn watching this or family member of a Capricorn or whatever it is I mean you know you you guys have uh, this great ability to go the distance 
and, and to reach some pretty amazing heights. So if I have a tip for you, Capricorn, what would my tip be? Well, my tip would be to spend time in your polar opposite, which is Cancer. As I think I pointed out, I've got lots of squiggles here. So spend time in your polar opposite Cancer. You can watch the Cancer video if you like to get some ideas. But if you don't have time, which I'm sure you probably don't have time because you're too busy running the world, uh, then I will give you a suggestion right now. My tip is go home, put on some cozy slippers, light some candles, nurture yourself in the privacy of your own home. Spend some time at home, basically. Spend some time uh, just unwinding, really. I think that would be my great tip for people who have lots of Capricorn energy. Well, I want to thank you so much for stopping by to this video, Capricorn. Thank you for, you know, learning something. Hopefully you've learned something new about the energy of your sign. And uh, you are a much loved and much needed part of the Zodiac. I can tell you that for sure. And, you know, we, we need Capricorn, good Capricorn leaders in this world to show us the way uh, to to have gone through challenges and to be able to show us the way you know I mean there is the dark night of the soul we are in winter here and you know don't worry if if you're still on your way to being at the top of your game okay that is a big feature of Capricorn as well that you know, it, it's not about being at the top of your game. It's, it's about being on the way. It's about being on that journey. And there are delays. There are setbacks. Because this is Saturn that we're talking about. Saturn is tough. And I know what those Saturnian delays are all about, believe me. And uh, it's polishing our souls. And we are becoming people with patience, which is truly a virtue in this modern world where everything's at the touch of a button so people who develop patience you know we become very unique souls in this modern fast-paced world so please don't ever be disheartened uh, if you are experiencing too much delay on your way to somewhere you know you'll get there you really will if you'd like, you can join me in the next sign, which I do recommend for you as well. So you can certainly spend some time in Cancer if you want to. That's a great idea. You can also come and visit me in Aquarius. We're going there next. And that's a terrific sign for you to explore more as well because it's also governed by Saturn. And, uh, you know, they are fellow Saturnians. I'm sure you would have a lot in common with Aquarians as well. So thanks very much for stopping by and perhaps I'll see you in Aquarius.